Oh, one. That was one. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of Heat Press Nation Live. I wasn't texting anybody. I'm just trying to get the comments opened up on here so I can see what you guys have to say. So do me a favor. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. We're going to have a good time today because I'm going to show you guys the absolute easiest way to press custom mugs at home or in your small business. We're going to go ahead and get started again. I'm just going to open up the comments here. You guys hear, hear myself. There we go. All right, we got Richard Stokes saying, what's up from Michigan? Very cool. We're going to give all these a second to load. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Lately, I've been seeing some comments like, Jared, you talk too much. And uh, I know, I do talk too much, especially because I've been in quarantine. By the way, give yourselves a hand clap because I think this week we're about to, we're about to hit like one year. I don't know, whatever. Give yourself a hand clap because you made it through a whole year of wearing a dumb mask. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've, I probably talk a lot because I've been in quarantine for like a year, so yeah, anyways. So I'm gonna get right into it. This is a mug, now this has already been prepared. I'm gonna do the Martha Stewart thing. So you know how Martha Stewart, like, you know, they, they do the recipe and then she puts it in the oven and then magically she pulls the finished one. Oh yeah, we did this before the show and she pulls it out. So I prepared this mug uh, before, we, before I came on screen here and I'm just gonna pop it right in. Now, I'm not even gonna explain this yet. I'm just gonna show you how easy it is. All right, there we, oh no, right. There we go. It's in there, timer, I'm not even gonna explain myself. That's how easy it is. So, while that one's pressing, I'm actually gonna get prepared. Now I'm gonna explain the second one. So here we have a really cool printout. Uh, this was printed with a Sawgrass SG500 sublimation printer. Uh, you could use, I guess, any sublimation printer or whatever sublimation materials you have. But I printed this out because I wanna get this really cool, kind of like dark spring pattern. I don't know if you guys could see that. What camera, there we go. Yeah, I really wanted to get this cool spring pattern onto a mug because I think it's dope. And I like having like colorful things at my desk, you know? So here's how we do it. So I printed this out. We have templates available online. In fact, we have tutorials on how to make your own templates on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out, youtube.com slash heatpressnation. So you can see I'm cutting a little close to my graphic, but not like, it doesn't have to be like perfectly at the edge. I'm just cutting close enough because uh, I'm gonna have to, as I'll show you in a second, I'm gonna have to tape this to my mug. I really wish I had one of those big paper cutters right now. Oh, there we go. Someone will pick those up. By someone, I mean me. And so now I'm left with this. This is the transfer. By the way, this is a sublimation blank mug. This is an Orca 11 ounce mug. Orca is probably my favorite. And the difference between Orca and the other ones is not very much of a difference at all. But, ooh, I got 80 seconds. All right, I see I talk too much. So. I'm gonna get a little piece of heat tape and I folded the tip, the edge over just to make it a little bit easier when I peel it. And this one, I'm just gonna slap it on there. There we go. And don't worry, we have more like in-depth tutorials on how to do this. I'm really showing off how easy it is today. I got my blank mug. I have my transfer. I gotta make sure it's not upside down. I don't know if there even is, oh, there it is. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the transfer up against the mug and you're just gonna center it on the transfer. Now your transfer should be about, uh, well, I know all of our fingers are different widths. For me, it's about a finger width. They should be about anywhere from a half inch to three quarter inch away from the edge of the mug. I'm gonna tape it down, tape it down, and this mug's ready to go in the mug press. And I did that with 30 seconds to spare. <laughs> CBC says, without the talking, what would we do? You're right. You would just be watching Boring Robot Man on TV. And by the way, last week I was complaining how cold it was. Now I'm complaining how hot it is. I don't know if you see me. I'm glistening over here, you guys. And part of it is because I have a, like, a 385 degree heat press right next to me. But it's just warm already. So crazy. You hear that beep? That means it's time to go. Now, this section is gonna get a little warm. 
Um, I'm kind of used to it by now. And uh, yeah, so you see a little bit of that steam release here. I'm gonna pull it out. Now the handle is okay to touch. Where am I? Yeah, there we go. The handle's okay to touch, but this is very, very hot. You do not want to touch the rest of the mug. The handle, again, is okay. Um, feel free to wear, I encourage you to wear heat resistant gloves if possible. I'm gonna set this down right here. Everybody has uh, different methods. Uh, some people say don't peel it too early because then you see these vapors going up. These are like the sublimation gases, right? If you peel too early, some of them seep up and you get this like funky streak effect on your transfers. So I like to keep it uh, nice and tight for about 20 to 30 seconds or so. Some more, some less. Some people dunk their mugs in a, in a little bucket of warm water. Do not use cold. Your mug will literally like, it'll shatter on the spot. Uh, people have different methods for what works for them. Uh, we're in a, a pretty warm room right now, so it's already kind of warm. I'm gonna let that sit for just another 10, 15 seconds or so. You don't wanna let it sit for too, too long. Um, but you know, 60 seconds to a minute, that's about 60 seconds to a minute. 60 seconds is a minute, sorry. Um, you know, 30 seconds to a minute is about how long you want it to rest. And uh, I think this one's ready to go. All right, I got, oh, by the way, shout out to my pal Alex. He's running, as usual, the cameras. Big shout out to Alex. So Alex, let's get camera two ready, right? Yeah, for the big reveal. Just like that. We have, look at that, chill vibes only. This is, this is what's considered a logo placement because you know, it didn't cover the full mug. The transfer I'm about to put in is gonna be just full top to bottom and as close to the edge as possible. And yeah, all right, so when I first put this mug in, I did not go over any of the process. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. So here's how easy it is to use the HPN Signature Series Sublimation Mug Press. We're gonna go over to the Mug Press now. I'm actually gonna turn it off, right? Now, when you first get to your Mug Press, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you get started, preferably while the press is cool, um, just so you don't worry about accidentally burning yourself or anything like that, um, is you're gonna adjust your pressure. Now, I've already adjusted my pressure uh, for this Mug Press. Now, what's cool about this Mug Press is we call it the quad point pressure system. There's four individually, and I think you could see them right there. There's four individual points of pressure to adjust the mug press, which it's really helpful. I mean, when you're working with straight stuff, it's still very helpful, but, and I don't have one on me today, but this is a, <clears throat> if you could see, this is a tapered heating element. More on the heating elements in a minute, but sometimes you're working with tapered stuff like shot glasses, or latte mugs, you know, they look like the Starbucks uh, tumblers. <clears throat> and so you're, you're working with stuff like that and you need to be able to adjust different points of pressure. That's why this, this, ain't no, this ain't no toy. So before you even get started, you're gonna get your mug, whatever size mug you're gonna put in there, and you're gonna drop it in. Now you want, what you're looking for is medium firm pressure. So again, this is warm, this part, I've found is usually gets pretty warm, but never too hot for me. I have, I have what's called uh, in the uh, Mexican community, I have tortilla fingers. I flip a lot, I touch the pan to flip a lot of tortillas. So I'm kind of, <laughs> these fingertips are used to the heat. So anyways, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that the handle stays perfectly in between the two edges of the heating element. You're gonna close it. And there should be, a, you see there's a little resistance right here. Usually I'm standing in front of it so I'm pulling down and it's a lot easier. Uh, talk about leverage, right? But right there, it's not very difficult. This nice, big, cushiony handle. It's nice and big, easy to pull down. What I don't have mounted right now, there's a separate handle here on the side. So you do not have to touch this. There's a handle that mounts over here. I take it off because I'm just really used to this. So what you're seeing is not the perfect way to do it. You're seeing me, my personal way to do it, because you know that's just how I do it. But over here on the side, there is a place to mount a nice cushiony handle, holds everything in place, gives you some leverage. That pressure is just about right. It could be a little bit looser. I prefer to err on the side of more, uh, which is no big deal. So when you get your mug in, you're gonna use these. Now let's say that was too tight. I would just do one, two. I always count. Yeah, 
I always count. So, you know, I did four turns over here, four turns over here, and it's actually still pretty solid pressure. So anyways, that's how you set the pressure. It's really easy. I'm actually going to leave it like that just to show you how good it still is. I'm going to turn this on. Now, of course, it'll keep the last settings as what I used before. So because I already had it set, you would do that. The bottom number is in green. That's your SV. That's your set value. That's where you want the press to be at. And the top number is uh, PV. That stands for present value. So you see 277 or sorry, 27, yeah, 277 and climbing. That's how hot this is right here. And so, so yeah, that's how hot that is right there. It's going to get it. We're going to wait for it to get to 385 before I put my mug in. 385 degrees for 190 seconds. That's like the perfect time to get one of these bad boys. Oh, sorry. Let's, I should have warned Alex. Alex, let's get over here real quick. Sorry, dude. There we go. 385, 190. We're going to get these incredible mugs all day long. And 190, by the way, is seconds. So 190 seconds, man, I love that. So cool, it is just, a, just what, three minutes, 10 seconds. We're almost at temperature. And so real quick, if it wasn't already set to these perfect settings that I love, you're gonna hit the okay button once. And if we got any of you expats, um, you know, you come from one of the countries where they have the metric system, you can use this and you can go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. I'm gonna leave it on Fahrenheit. There's a little blinking F there. You use the arrow buttons to change whatever you want. Uh, set value, 385. So, you know, if I wanted to go to 390, just hit up. But I'm going to bring it right back down to 385. Hit OK. 190 seconds. That's perfect. Maybe I have something a little bit bigger and thicker. I need to take it up to 200 seconds. But I don't. So I'm going to go back down to 190. I'm going to hit OK. And then that's it. It's that easy to set your heat press to where it's supposed to be. Uh, you don't need to connect it to anything. This doesn't have like a USB or Bluetooth. It doesn't plug into your computer or anything like that. Uh, you are in complete control of the heat settings. And again, we're at 350, 360 right now. We've got a, a few seconds before it gets up to temperature. So I'm going to see if we have any questions here. Craig Bradley's asking, how many can you realistically do in an hour? So if you, if you were here for the beginning, you saw I loaded a mug in. And in the time it took me to press one mug, I had already cut and prepared my second mug. So you could, oh, the beeping sound is the machine telling me, hey, I'm on, don't forget about me. To get that to be quiet, you just lower the handle once and it'll stop. Um, so you could realistically keep this thing running. The in-between time is anywhere at, uh, from like 10 to 30 seconds for you to pull one mug out and just drop the next one in. As you saw, while my first mug was pressing, as long as you have your prints already printed, um, you can you can cut them and and uh, put them onto your mug in the time it takes for one to be done. I do mugs. I try so I again I, I do this on the side. I have dude. I have the mug press. I have the sawgrass. I have the heat press. I have the vinyl cut. I have like all this stuff at home, right? My wife hates me for it. Um, but I do I do large mug art. So my specialty is uh, you know and again I'm just kind of gonna talk more personally about what I do. Um, my, I was, my dad's a pastor, right, and I uh, grew up in church, and I actually work at my church right now. That being said, I have lots of contacts. It, my personal network is filled with nonprofits. Like, I have tons of nonprofit contacts, and they are always looking uh, for ways to fundraise, for ways to thank their employees, uh, for just lots of different things. And so sometimes that involves mugs, and I don't, I'm not a big fan personally, personally. Um, I do take single mug orders. I charge for them, of course, like a lot more. My specialty is I'll, you know, these nonprofit contacts that I have, uh, I'll say, hey, do you want a case? I'll sell them by the case. And I can get through a case. I keep this running. I get through a case. Uh, of course, it takes over an hour because the case is 36 mugs. Each mug takes three minutes. Realistically, I, I account for four minutes a mug, and that is how I calculate my time. So four minutes, if a case of mugs is 36, uh, four minutes is going to be 126, I don't know. It's going to be a little over two hours uh, with one mug press. Now, if you're running a business and you want to just like handle these in, like you want to just do a ton of these, just get two. Get two mug presses. 
and it's fast. We did that for one of the guys. He got married here and they did coffee mugs for their uh, wedding favors. And so they had like two or three mug presses going and we were just cranking and very, very fast. You literally tip, triple, uh, double or triple your time with every mug press that you have. Again, the, the long part is waiting for the mug to finish. And at 190 seconds, that's pretty quick. If you put it in the oven, you're talking 12 minutes a mug. Um, other, other mug presses might take a little bit longer, might have different settings. These ones, we found that at 385 degrees, 190 seconds, it's beautiful. Anyways, I talk a lot, all right? That's, uh, I think we've established that here on Heat Press Nation Live. Okay, uh, Richard's asking, what happens if you let it sit for too long? I've had it set for five to 10 minutes. Uh, if you're referring to after you pull the mug out, if you let it sit too long, um, I don't know. I've seen, I, I've, I've left some for a while and they've, they've come out okay. I've left some and then they've, I've seen a little bit of ghosting on there. Ideally, you just kind of don't want to let it sit too long. Another thing that uh, might happen is the ink might be still active because it's hot and your colors might not be 100% what you intended for them to be. I don't know. I've just found, and I'm just sharing my, uh, the ideal settings, and we've done a lot of mugs here. Peel it within about a minute after you press. You don't want to do it too early. Wait at least 30 seconds and then peel. You have that little window there of when you could peel them. Uh, great question. Jay is asking, uh, what if you need extra parts like the wire and other sizes? So I'm going to pause for a second and say that this machine is backed by Heat Press Nation's one-year warranty and free lifetime technical support. Uh, the warranty is able to be extended. So we do offer an extended warranty, which really extends the time of the warranty. Um, so if you ever need any parts or anything like that, because these things get used, all right? I'm going to tell you, these things get used. Um, so if you ever wear out a part or you need a replacement uh, heating element, and now's a good time to talk about these, uh, you can just give us a call, 800-215-0894. We'll get you taken care of. Um, what I love about this heat press is it does great for the 11 and the 15 ounce mugs. Uh, by the way, this is an 11 ounce mug. This mug size that you're seeing right here, 11 ounce. The most common mug size that you're gonna come across. And like I said, it's, it's a little warm in here, so you'll have to, you'll have to forgive me. Um, yeah, so what's cool about this, and I wish we had one of each, um, we have, there's tons of different options, like, you're, it's not just coffee mugs, you could do this, like, stainless steel thermos, uh, well, it's not a thermos brand, but, uh, insulated tumbler, we actually did this for our Valentine's Day episode, we showed you how to customize these, um, we have these really cool sublimation water bottles, um, m my personal favorite, the frosted glass dine. Uh, any holiday is really good. This is one we do for Christmas, but these are huge sellers for Father's Day. And they're fully customizable. You see I have a full color image on here. Now it is a little translucent, so you do want to make sure that you have like darker images on here, you know, darker colors, but these are killer, especially around holidays like Christmas, Father's Day. These are dope. We actually, Alex, is the video out yet for this? Not yet, right? It is, yes. So these metallic mugs, I don't know if you can tell, it has a sparkly silver underlayer. These are nuts. These are super cool. We have an attachment for shot glasses. We have an attachment for mini mugs, which are, oh my gosh, they're so cute, all right? Uh, we have an attachment for water bottles, and then we have, an, we have attachments for short and tall tapered mugs. And when I say tapered, um, I wish I had one on me. But they, it's the Starbucks, you know the Starbucks shape? Well, they have them in, they have ceramic versions of those. And then they also have latte mugs. Oh, no, that one's not it. That one won't fit. It's, well, it's like this, but bigger. This one is a very funky size, so you have to use an oven. I'm not going to talk about that. We have other videos on that. Um, but it's like this, but a little bit taller. And it's very, very cool. And all of these are compatible with this mug press. That's what I love about the Signature Series mug presses. You're not limited to just one size and one style of mugs. There's little, these are just like, what, five of the, I don't want to say hundreds, but very, very many. Very, very many uh, different kinds, uh, types, sizes, styles of sublimation drinkware. And uh, you, these are available. So if you already have this mug press, uh, these are available. You could buy them individually, separately, or we do sell it in a bundle if you don't have a mug press. We have the two-in-one. Uh, so this comes standard with the element that you're not seeing because it's in there, fits these. Uh, if you get the two-in-one, 
you get that plus the shot glass, so that's two elements. If you get the four and one, my memory's a little hazy on the exact ones. I believe it's shot glass, water bottle, and tall taper. And then if you get the six and one, then you get all six, which those four, plus the short taper and the mini mug. It really just opens you up to a world of sublimation blank, sublimation drinkware, where it's, it's all crazy. And these are not any harder to do than what you just saw here. So back to showing you how easy it is to use the Signature Series sublimation mug press. Uh, I just showed you how easy it was to set your time, your temperature, set your pressure. And I did it at the beginning, but maybe it was too fast for you. Maybe you didn't see it. So I'm going to drop this one right in. And uh, we're just going to see. Let's, we got three minutes on the clock. Actually, three minutes and 10 seconds. And as you can see, like, I am definitely not burning myself. Like, we've, we designed this machine like this, like Black Shield. Yes, it gets warm, um, but, like, I am not struggling to really touch that. So, uh, yeah, so that's really awesome. So we got three minutes on the clock. I'm going to hop on over to our pals on YouTube. I cannot believe. I'm sorry, YouTube. I love you. I love you so much. Let me just open you up and log into the right channel. That way you guys don't find my personal YouTube and you see all the idiot videos that I have on there. Okay. Oh, these are great questions. Uh, Casey Dow says, where can I find the frosted beer mug you had? Heatpressnation.com. Heatpressnation.com. Actually, Alex, can you do me a favor? I had somebody asking me about that. Can you hand me that really cool tumbler? Yeah, yeah, just there we go. Are you, if you're asking, are you asking about this? I see the question coming in from Marina Morales. Can you do a 20 ounce skinny tumbler? I don't know how many ounces this is. I would assume this is the 20 ounce skinny tumbler. And uh, it is, okay, perfect. So this one, it will fit in the 10 ounce mug press, but as you'll see, you're, uh, there's gonna be parts of it that are sticking out. Now this is great if you wanna just put, making a mess here. That's okay if you wanna just put just a logo, but if you're looking for this full wrap, you will need to have a oven wrap. And we actually have a video coming out, or it's out already? It's coming out, it's coming out. We have a video coming out very soon on how to do that. So we have these blanks available on our website, heatpressnation.com. In fact, all the blanks you see up here, we have them available at heatpressnation.com. And these, these are in, I love these. Great, great sellers. Okay, other questions, let's see, let's see. Uh, Patricia's asking, am I, am I using sublimation ink on this mug press? Yes, I am. The transfers uh, that I used today, these are all printed on a Sawgrass SG printer. I think all of these were printed with the SG 500. Um, we might have used the 1000 for a couple of them, but it's, it's basically the same thing. So yeah, you see that? Chill vibes only, same thing on the other side. See, wait a few minutes before you touch it. Okay. Um, oh, this is a great question. She says, uh, Bouncer is saying, I haven't had luck with the tabletop convection oven and wraps seem like only a Hick Hicks would work. Well, lucky for you, we did these, this, this one on a tabletop convection oven. So you'll get to see that in our upcoming video, which is a great time for me to plug our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash heatpressnation. We have new videos literally coming out all the time. Every week, I think we have like at least one or two brand new videos coming out every week. In addition to the live streams that you'll find, which is what you're watching right now, me. Hey guys. Um, yeah, so we have new content coming out all the time. How to do this. We have like detailed videos on how to do. That's time. I'm going to pause that thought for one second. So I'm just going to carefully open it up. Now this is what's called a full bleed mug, meaning that the print extended over the surface. So we're actually going to get a full top to bottom print on this mug. One thing I have noticed is because the paper sticks out, instead of letting it cool like this, I lay it on its side to cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it smells kind of funny. Okay, after a while, the burnt paper smell, and it's not burnt, by the way, let me not, it's not burnt. The cooked paper smell. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like it. It's really weird. Anyways, yeah, so that's our mug. So if you tuned in at the beginning, you saw I just dropped this bad boy in there, and three minutes later, I had a beautiful mug. And of course, this one, you guys got to join me for the process on that. We're going to let that cool for about another 25 seconds or so. Then I'm going to peel it, 
and show you just how cool a mug looks. And I'm gonna come like, I'm gonna get like in your face. I'm gonna show you guys up close how awesome these mugs are. Let's see if you have any other questions though. Oh, this is a great question. Um, Pro Multis Media says, just got an order for black mugs. Haven't done them before. Is the white on both sides or just one side? Alex, do we have that black patch mug out here? We don't, huh? No, we don't. It's okay. It's okay. So we have these. Do you want to grab it? Love, gotta love Alex, man. Uh, so I'll show you what we have. Um, it's interesting. I used this mug to make a gift for my brother for Christmas. Um, Awesome, thanks dude. So this is a, and we have heatpressnation.com, check out our sublimation blanks. So this is a black mug and it has this white patch for sublimation. Now when you're working with sublimation, you gotta remember that there's no white ink in the sublimation uh, printer. So, and this is a perfect example. So you see how we have this like aluminum, uh, silvery colored, you know, mug. The white of the of the tiger's like face fur, like that's actually just silver. There, there's no white. The printer doesn't print white, so any white on your image, it'll leave the area blank. So if you oh there we go. So if you have something like this, it's not that bad because the light silver like it still looks really cool. And in fact, even these colors like the oranges and the blacks, you could still see some of the silver come through it. Uh, so it has a really cool metallic look. Now, if somebody wants black mugs, what you do is you're gonna, and this will take some testing, so make sure you do some practice, um, but you're gonna only press this white area and the background of your image will have to be black. You're gonna wanna do some tests. And you know, this is actually a great video idea on how to test for the right color black, Alex. Um, you're gonna wanna do some tests to see what color black, uh, what color, um, when I say what color black, like if you're working it in like Photoshop, like what CMYK value is gonna work best for getting your blacks to match the black of the mug. Uh, that's the only tough part, but if you're filling this area in with a lot, if there's like a lot going on in there, yeah, they probably won't really notice the seam of where the image touches the black. But this is pretty much the only way, if you're working with a sublimation um, printer, this is the only way you're gonna get your image on a black mug. So yeah, it does take a little bit of work to do, but it's definitely possible. And uh, like I said, it took me about three tries um, I can't say what I made um, because it's not appropriate, <laughs> but it took me about three tries to match the color uh, black uh, of the background of my image uh, to, to match the mug. And so I had like two spare mugs left over, but I ended up giving the good one to my brother for Christmas. So yeah, so this one's uh, actually waited long enough. Now you can see here, and I'll show you this trick right now. You can see here, there's a little tab of, of tape that I do. I'm just gonna pull that up. Pull that off. Oh my gosh, dude, that is real pretty. Check that out. Are we guys, are we seeing this? I'm hoping it'll auto, the autofocus. I'm waiting for the autofocus to adjust on this mug. There it is. It's, it's coming, it's coming. There it is. Dude, look at that. So again, full top to bottom printing. Now, the only thing that's not full is, you know, of course, there is gonna be a little, right there, I'm trying not to touch the mug because it's very hot still. Um, yeah, so you see that right there. And I'm looking to the side because that's where my monitor is. Dude, look at those colors, man. The blacks are really rich. All of the colors look really rich. And this mug is dope. So you could put a cool saying on there, chill vibes only. You could just do a straight up, transfer on here and they're both gonna look absolutely amazing took three minutes to make these beautiful things uh, and the question came in a little bit earlier how many can you realistically do in an hour uh, honestly I, I estimate four minutes per mug it takes three minutes in the press but then you know you pull one out you set it aside you put one in you would, you would do your little adjusty justy Average is about four minutes. You could probably get your, you could, if you, once you like, if you're in the zone, you could uh, probably fine tune it to be about three and a half minutes a mug. If you're really like, if you're just bang, man, you're just like, whatever, right? Uh, but yeah, four minutes a mug, dude. So in an hour, oh, 64, 20, I don't know, 24, 25, 24, 25 mugs an hour or so. 
which is not bad. A case, so that means that a case of 36 mugs, um, you know, you're giving bulk price, whatever. I clear close to a hundred bucks for, a, for every case of mugs that I sell. And so for in total to set up the template, to print everything out, all that jazz, two hours of work for a case of mugs, hundred bucks, I'll take it. It's not bad. Anyways, let's see what other questions we got here. And, and, and these are estimates. If you guys know me, you know my head math is not that great. Okay. But uh, it's very close though. Okay, Crafty Brick says, that's beautiful, love it. Uh, Peachy Dixon says, love this press and the automatic mug press. Oh man, okay. If you think this is too hard, which is not, this is the easiest way to make a beautiful custom mugs. We do have a fully automatic mug press where you literally just go and then the mug press will go and it even makes funny noises and it goes You have little transform, we have little mini transformers in there and they're working really hard. No, you put the mug in and the mug press literally just wraps around on its own, opens on it. It's like, it's for lazy. No, no, no. Actually, no, no. It's not for lazy people because some people, uh, and let's be real, if you have uh, arthritis or if you have, you know, this is not a lot of physical effort uh, to close it down. However, some folks, they may be a little bit limited uh, by disability. So I got to get, I got to get over the whole, it's, it's not lazy. For me, it would be lazy. But anyways. Uh, the automatic mug press is really great because you don't have literally any physical effort required. Now, this is not a huge physical effort, but for somebody with arthritis or some sort of physical disability, it may not be 100% possible uh, for them to do this every time, multiple times. Uh, I wish I had a fully automatic mug press up here with me. We do have videos of it on our YouTube, but literally you just put the mug in, don't even touch anything, and it goes gzz, gzz. really cool. Yeah, so thank you for mentioning that, uh, Peachy Dixon. Uh, Crafty Brick says, do you have a template for the black mug on the website? No, I don't. Um, do we? No, but we do have two things. Uh, we do have a video that shows you exactly how to create your own templates in Photoshop, which I highly recommend if you're going to get into, if you're going to get pretty deep into sublimation uh, mug printing, you definitely want to be able to create your own templates in Adobe Photoshop. Um, so we have videos that it'll show you exactly how to make your own template for this. I do have my template for this, uh, which I'm happy to share in our Facebook group. So right now is a really good time to plug our Facebook group. Uh, you can go there. If you're on Facebook right now, you can just look for Heat Press Nation Creators. That's the name of our group. Um, or if you're not, you could just type in, and I think it's on the screen. Yes, it's on screen. Heat.press slash FB group. I'd be happy to share uh, my black mug. And I used it for this exact style, the 15 ounce uh, black mug template. Uh, I used it for that. And yeah. Uh, I'd be happy to show it in our Facebook group. So if you're not in the group, please do me a favor and join heat.press slash FB group. And again, I'll be sharing my personal template. I have, uh, we have, we have templates for a lot of these products already on our website. If you're using a sawgrass printer, there's templates for these already in Creative Studio, which is a whole other monster I'm not even going to get into. It's beautiful, 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 delicious monster, um, Creative Studio. Uh, and then like this, I just happen to have a personal template that I've already created for this that I'm happy to share. Okay, great, great question. Uh, Alex is asking, how can I sublimate on a clear mug or is that possible? Um, so this is a, this is a frosted mug. It's a little bit see-through. You can kind of, it's a little see, this is probably the clearest mug that we have. Um, one thing you can't do, which I should have mentioned earlier, I, th I think I might have, is you can't just go to a dollar store and pick up a random, you know, dollar mug. The mugs, all the drinkware that you see up here has been specially coated to react with the sublimation dye. Uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but basically sublimation ink is very special. When it's heated up, it turns into a gas dye, and then the pressure from the heat press forces that dye into the surface of the mug. Now, if the mug has not been specially coated, it's not gonna react with the gas dye, and it will not absorb it, and you will not get this beautiful, vibrant image. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, you can't just go to the dollar store, you can't just go to Walmart and get any random mug. They do have to be special coated. What is in here? <laughs> I don't know what's in there. Uh, they have to be specially coated mugs uh, able to take and react with the sublimation dye. All these are available at heatpressnation.com in case you're curious. Nicole Painter is asking, how do we make sure that the print on the mug doesn't spread anywhere else eventually? It won't. So the beauty of sublimation is that you're literally dyeing the surface of the mug. That makes this extremely permanent. 
the mug, the prints will actually last just as long as the mug itself. I'm on two, there we go. Uh, the prints will last just as long as the mug itself, uh, meaning that you'll probably break the mug and drop it or your kids will use it for BB gun target practice before this fades away. It's dishwasher safe. Most of these are micro, well, obviously not the metal ones or the plastic, anything with metal or plastic, but you know, the ceramics, uh, they're microwave safe, dishwasher safe, and they're not gonna like spread it. Like you could, well, I'm not gonna, but like you could like lick it. Like it's not, it's uh, the ink, the, well, sawgrass sublimation ink is certified non-toxic. I can't speak for any of those other inks out there. Uh, you definitely want it. That's what, another reason why I love Sawgrass. Uh, but yeah, it's it's food safe, it's touch safe, it's child safe. It's it, it's as safe as you could possibly be. It's just as safe as anything you would buy in the store you know, regarding safety. It's not gonna bleed. Once it's been heated up, it's not gonna bleed or spread. I think the only thing you wouldn't wanna do is put it in an oven at 385 degrees. Uh, I don't know if anyone who's even cooking the hot, like your coffee is only like, what, a hundred and something degrees, if that. Um, so it's there's no real situation where these would get hot enough to reactivate the ink. But I guess I should warn you to not put it in a 400 degree oven. I don't know why you're cooking, recooking these for 400 degrees. Um, but yeah, very, very safe, very, very permanent, beautiful, amazing ink. Like I can't say enough good stuff about how much I love sublimating with sawgrass ink onto these sublimation blanks. It looks beautiful and it stays beautiful forever. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Question, question, questions. Any more questions? <laughs> okay, the bouncer 2004, you're my new favorite. He says, oh, he or she, actually, I don't even know. Uh, for anyone that does not own one of these HP and Signature presses, all caps, just buy it. <laughs> I bought other presses. They had a single central knob adjust on the back that mounted and caused fading at the top or bottom. Dude, that's terrible. Well, I'm glad you found yourself uh, into one of these beautiful HP and Signature series. Uh, mug presses. I'm gonna hop back over to our Facebook channel. We got any questions going on here? Uh, Dorothy's asking, can the metallic mugs be done in a convection oven? Uh, a convection oven? I can't talk right now. A convection oven or only on a mug press? That's a great question. Uh, these can totally be done in an oven. We have we have a video. Actually, I did a webinar on mug wraps. Uh, so if you go to our YouTube channel, you just scroll back a few weeks. Look up that webinar. I didn't do one of these particularly, but they're safe for the oven if you have the correct uh, mug wrap. Actually, all of these, except again, if it has plastic on it, you can't put it in the oven. So anything, you can either remove the plastic. Uh, for this, we did put this in the oven and the top is removable. So obviously we're not gonna put plastic in the oven, but we just put this and it came out beautiful. So be sure to check that out. Excellent job by my pal Alex, whom you don't see. Well, actually you do see. You, if you watch our YouTube, you've actually seen Alex's hands. He's my hand stunt double. Cause his hand, look at these pudgy little paws. His hands are prettier than mine. So uh, he's my stunt double. Okay, let's see, we got any other questions here. Susie's saying, I wish there was an attachment for skinny tumblers. I do too, because I love using the mug press over the oven. I'm not a big, I love that you can use the oven but I really like, once you get working on a mug press, you're like, oh, the oven 12 minutes versus three. I'll, I'll go with the mug press. Okay, any other questions? That's a good point. Jerry Dyke is asking, no protective paper around the design prior to going into the press for additional protection? Not really. Uh, even when I did the full bleed mug, and you, you can't see it, but like for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the pressure or what, but I haven't, oh, it's not that hot. Sometimes I have done that where I grab a fresh hot mug, but like we don't really have any problems with outgassing in the mug press. I don't know if it's because of the curved design. Uh, I don't know if it's just because of the pressure on the mug, but I haven't had that issue. Um, so like with, as far as like staining the mug press, you know, cause sometimes on a heat press, if you, when you pressing flat stuff, you know, you heat press it and then the parchment paper, it, it's like, there's like, like you can clearly, the ink has impressed their ink has seeped out the sides and it stains stuff. It's why you want to use parchment paper. I, I don't know if you guys could see it. You know, in fact, I'm just going to hold it up. Like if you look, I don't even know if you guys can see, no, no, this is not happening. But anyways, yeah, so the, the inside and what you're looking at, the inside, it's still clean. Like there's no stain on it. So I don't know what it is about mug presses, but you don't have to do that. 
It's not gonna, the outgassing, it doesn't get on the element. I don't know. I can't explain that phenomenon. But uh, yeah, so that's why I don't use any uh, protective paper. Great question though. Uh, that's, blah, blah, blah. Richard Stokes is asking, what is the, get a heating element rated for, oh, okay, sorry, probably a typo. How many presses before they wear out? Um, dude, we've been using this one for a hot minute and it's still going strong. Uh, we do have some customers who use these in a commercial setting and they've reported, uh, depending on how hot, if you're running 385 for 190, which is on the Lawrence, some of them run it like, like 400 and above and they keep it on like 12 hours a day. Like they're just boom, 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 boom. They're just pressing mugs all day long. Uh, they've gone as low as like, I think, and this is not gospel truth. Uh, this is just my experience with certain customers. I want to say it's around five, 600 on the very low end. Um, but easily should be, should be getting you, you know, more than that, especially if you're just using it casual use. And I'll say this on my mug press at home, I'm at about five or 600, uh, presses. And I know that because I've done a bunch of cases uh, of mugs. I can't even remember. I know I've, I'm in the dozens of cases of mugs right now. So I know I've done several hundred mugs minimum and it's like showing no signs of going anywhere. It's still going strong. The replacement, these are like 40 bucks. So by the time you've reached the point where you eventually will need to replace this, trust me, it'll pay for itself. $40 to get you another, even if it was 500, let's just say it's 500, it's not. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but let's say it's 500. Um, 500 presses, every press is making you money. So 500 presses, you put away what? Like 10 cents for every press? And it's paid for. Yeah, but you're making, trust me, you're making a lot more than that. By the time you reach 500 presses on your mug press, you'll have probably paid the mug press off uh, and you'll have no problem getting a replacement for 40 bucks. Um, does the press shut off automatically? If so, how many minutes to shut off? Uh, no, this one, ooh, that's a great question. I know some of the newer Signature Series uh, clamshells do have a shut off, and I don't remember what it is. I'm not sure if the mug presses have that. So what I will do is I will comment back on that a little bit later. Okay, well, so we've seen it all. You've seen just how easy it is to make beautiful, colorful, delicious, my wife hates when I say delicious for things that aren't food. But I don't know, it's like visually delicious. Anyways, uh, delicious, beautiful mugs, uh, and it's so easy to make them at home with the HP and Signature Series Sublimation Mug Press. Uh, you guys saw it. It's right there. Not only are these fun to make, but they're making money. They're making money on there. This is one of the few toys that pays for itself. My PlayStation doesn't pay for itself. Um, my guitars, I like to pretend they pay for themselves, but they, they don't. They don't. <laughs> but, uh, but my mug press does, my heat press does, and I think that's the beauty of it all. Anyways, uh, I think that's gonna do it for me. Uh, I really hope you guys uh, are inspired to create. We have tons of videos about the mug press, about how to make mugs. They're more detailed, they're a lot shorter, a lot less of me uh, yapping, you know, flapping my gums. So if you're, if you're already sick of me, we got lots of videos without me. It's great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and we show you how to use the different heating elements, how to press different stuff. Keep your eyes out because this really dope Tumblr video is coming out in the very near future. Subscribe to our channels. You get all this great content. Uh, and I think I'm just going to say adios. I thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope you have an excellent day and a happy Friday, Junior. We'll see you around.